Okay, so in this video we're going to have a look at column vectors. Now the question that you can see on the screen is the type of question that we're going to build up to throughout this video, although we're going to have a look at some more simple column vectors to start with and just look at adding and subtracting them and how we go about that. So with that being said, grab a piece of paper, grab a pen and let's get started. <laughs> Okay, so the first question that we're going to have a look at is here on the screen. We've got the vector a, which is 5 over 3, and the vector b, which is 4 over 2. And it wants us to write down a plus 2b as a column vector. Now, the process to actually go about doing this is quite nice and simple, but it's important to understand why we go about the process we do and how it works. So that vector a, 5 and 3. Now, the number on the top represents the movement left and right. So a number 5 means a right movement of 5. Okay, if it was negative 5, that would be going left by 5. Now, the number on the bottom represents going up and down. So, as after it's gone right by 5, it's then going to go up by 3. So, there we go, it's going to go up 3 as well. So, if we think about this as a start and end point, it's going to start over here where we started, and it's going to end just here at the top of that 3. So, the actual vector itself would go from there to there. There we go, and we would put a little arrow on there just to indicate that it's gone in that direction, and that right there would be the vector A. Now we could actually just get rid of these movements now. I'm going to leave them on there, but obviously the actual vector itself is that vector there with the indicated arrow showing the direction that it's gone in. And that's our vector A. And we can do exactly the same for vector B. We're not going to do that because obviously it's just going to be the same. It's going to go right by 4 and up by 2. But essentially what we're being asked to do here is to combine these vectors. So we've got that it wants us to write down a plus 2b or 1a plus 2b. Now that means it wants us to do the movement a, which is going to go across 5 and up by 3. And then it wants us to do the movement b, and it wants us to do that twice. So we're going to go across by 4 and then across another 4, and then up by 2 and up another 2. So in order to combine all of that, and just to show the total movement that we're doing, we can actually just do it numerically. Okay, we don't have to do these drawings, or it is good to know these drawings for future questions and just obviously being able to understand the question. So the five, vector 5 over 3, we're just going to write that down, 5 over 3, and that's our vector A. And we're going to add to that 2 lots of B. Now I'm going to put this outside the bracket, so I'm going to do 2 lots of 4 over 2. Now, you didn't have to write down 2 lots of that. We could have just straight away times them by 2. So if we write that out as well, we've got 5 over 3. And then we've got two lots of the other ones. We've got 8 over 4, just doubling those vectors in there. And that's what we're going to add together. So that's a movement of 5 across and 8 across. So if we just add together those top numbers, on tot in total there, that's a movement across of 13. And on the bottom, we've got 3 and 4, and that's a total movement of 7 going up. So our final vector there is 13 over 7. And it is as simple as that with column vectors. It's just a case of finding the two vectors that you can add together and literally just adding those together, the top numbers, and adding together the bottom numbers. So there we go. That's how we're going to approach these questions. Let's have a look at one where we've got some negatives involved. Okay, so a slightly different question here. We've got some negatives in our vectors. We've got a negative on the top of A and a negative on the bottom of B. So that indicates a left movement of 2 there for vector A and a down movement of 1 for vector B. And it wants us here to write down 2A minus B as a vector. So we're going to do the vector 2A. So let's do that one to start with. We've got 2 lots of, and then we have minus 2 and 5. And we're going to take away from that vector B, which is 3 and minus 1. OK, let's sort out this two lots of vector A to start with. So doubling both of those, we have minus 4 over 10. OK, so just doubling those. And we're going to take away this 3 over minus 1. Now, we're going to deal with the top numbers to start with. So let's just think about this numerically. We've got minus 4, and we're going to take away this time. We're going to take away 3. So minus 4, take away 3, leaves us with minus 7. And on the bottom there, we just need to be careful because we're going to be doing 10 and we're going to take away that negative 1 on the bottom. So taking away a negative, that's obviously going to add 1. So actually we're going to do 10 add 1 here and that's going to be 11. And there we go. There is our final vector, minus 7 over 11, written as a column vector. Okay, there we go. So that is how we're going to add and subtract vectors, depending on what the question's asking. So let's have a go at some for you to have a go at. 
Okay, so there's two questions there, so pause the video, have a go at these two, and we'll go over the answers in a sec. Okay, so for the first one, we've got two lots of A, and I'm going to skip a few steps, I'm going to miss that first step of working out. So if we double A, we've got 4, and we've got minus 2. And we're going to add to that three lots of B, so that's going to be 9 on the top, three lots of the 3, and 15 on the bottom, three lots of the 5. And if we add those together, we've got 4 plus 9 on the top, which is 13. And we've got negative 2, add 15 on the bottom, which again gives us 13. So there we go, 13 over 13 is our final answer there for 2a add 3b. On to the next one, we've got 3a take away b. So let's do 3 lots of a to start with. So that's going to be minus 3 on the top and 9 on the bottom. There we go, I'm going to take away 1 lot of b. So 3 over minus 2, again just being careful with this negative. Let's deal with the top to start with then. So negative 3, take away 3, gets us down to negative 6. And on the bottom there we've got 9 take away negative 2. Again taking away a negative, so we're going to add 2. So 9 add 2 gives us 11. And there we go, there's our final vector there, negative 6 over 11. And there we go, that's how we're going to add and subtract vectors. Right, okay, so for the next step we're going to have a look at some of these vectors graphically and have a look at how they actually look like and how we might approach those sorts of questions that you saw at the start. So let's have a look at those. Okay, so for these next few questions we've got some visual vectors that we can actually see drawn on the grid. And it says in the question here the vector A and B are shown on the grid. And we've got vector A that we can see there going sort of upwards to the right and vector B that we've got going downwards to the right as well. And it says for part A here, on the grid draw and label the vector minus 2A. Now obviously 2A will just be double the distance of A. The fact that it's put a minus in there means it's going in the opposite direction. So instead of our arrow pointing upwards, it's going to be kind of coming downwards to the left. So in terms of looking at this, we just need to establish what the pattern is of A just to make sure that we draw this in correctly. And you can kind of see if we start from a certain point, we need to go across 1 and we go up 2. There we go, let's draw that again. So we go across 1 and we go up 2. Right, so in, in terms of actually getting the pattern here, we just need to pick somewhere, hopefully not somewhere where it's going to overlap with A. So let's start down here. There we go. And we're going to go across 1, up 2, which gets us to there. Across 1, up 2 again, and that will get us to there. Okay, so let's rub that out. So in terms of actually drawing the line in, that would be the vector 2A, double the distance of A and following that same pattern, across 1, up 2. The fact that we're doing minus 2A just means we need to point the arrow in the opposite direction. So there we go, we can label that, that would be the vector minus 2a. And there we go, there's part a done for that one. Now for the other one, we've got to work out the vector a plus 2b as a column vector. And the process of looking at the pattern is really going to help us for this. So we looked at the vector a to start with. Now that vector a, and we can write this down over here, the vector a, it went across 1 and up 2. So that would be 1 in the positive right direction and then 2 obviously being a positive in the up, you know, moving upwards. So there's our vector A, 1 over 2. Now the vector B, let's have a look at that one. So from the start, obviously it's going downwards, this one as shown by the arrow. That's going to go across 1, so a positive 1, and then it goes down by 3, so that'll be negative 3. So the vector B, if we write that in, B is equal to 1 over minus 3. So now we've established that, we can just treat that like we did in those earlier questions. We're going to do an A, and we're going to add to that two Bs. So in terms of writing this one out, we've got A, which is 1 over 2. And we're going to add to that two of the Bs. So that's going to be two lots of 1 on the top, which is 2. And two lots of minus 3 on the bottom, which is minus 6. There we go, and we can add those together. So 1 plus 2 on the top gives us 3. And then 2 add negative 6 on the bottom. Well, when we add negative, that's going to take that away. So that'll be minus 4 on the bottom. So our final vector will be 3 over negative 4. And there we go, that's how we're going to approach these vectors when they're, when they're on a graph. Obviously we can just turn the vector into a column vector and treat it just like we did on the previous questions. Let's have a look at one more of these before your final question to have a go at. Okay, so something ever so slightly different. It says the vector C is shown on the grid, and we can see that vector C there in the top left of our grid. It says from the point P, draw and label the vector 3C. So this is very similar to the last question, it's that we have to start at that point P. So again, let's establish the pattern. So it goes along 3, and it goes up by 2. And what we want to do 3C here, so we're going to want to do 3 of those. Well, let's draw one of those to start with. So across 3, I'm just going to start at P. Across 3, up 2, gets us to there. That's 1C. Across 3, up another 2, gets us to here. And across 3, up another 2, 
gets us to there. So that's going to be 3C. So let's join all of those together. There we go. Put the arrow in the same direction as it's not minus 3C. We'll label that as the vector 3C. There we go, there's part A done. Obviously joining that with a pencil and a ruler. It says next the vector D, and the vector D is minus 1, 3. And it wants us to work out the vector C plus 2D as a column vector. This is very similar to part B in our last question. So we've already been given the vector D as a column vector rather than on the grid this time. But the vector C we haven't actually been given as a column vector. So let's write that down. So C is going to be equal to, and it was 3 across, which is 3 on the top, and 2 up, which is 2 on the bottom. So there's our vector C. So now we just need to do one of those and add two of the d's onto that. So let's write down the sum. We've got three and two, and we're gonna to add to that two of the d's, so that's gonna be minus two on the bottom, and it's gonna be six, sorry, minus two on the top and six on the bottom. Now we can add those together. Again, all we did was double this vector d there, and we've got three add minus two, which is one on the top, and two add six, which gives us eight on the bottom. And again, there is our final vector. So there we go, that's how we're going to approach these when they're done graphically. Now let's have a look at a question for you to have a go at to finish this off. Okay, so for the final question, very similar to one we looked at before, we've got the same vectors there but some slightly different questions. So have a go at these. For part A it does ask you to draw it. Obviously you don't need to sketch this all out, you can just kind of imagine how you would draw it and hopefully it'll match up once we go over the answers. So have a go at these three questions here, pause the video and we'll go over the answers in a sec. Okay, so for the first part, on the grid, draw and label the vector minus 2b. So the vector b we've got over on the right there, and that goes across 1 and it goes down 3. So that's going to be 1 across and 3 down. Well, let's draw in two of those. Obviously, we're going to do the negative version, so we'll point our arrow in the other direction, but let's find somewhere to try and draw this in. So if we go across 1, let's start here. Let's go across 1, down 3. That gets us to there, and then across one down three, that's going to go off the grid. So we're going to have to start again, so that's fine. As long as we haven't drawn it in, we're not going to make too much of a mess. Maybe let's just start at the top, just like this one does. So let's go along one, down three, that gets us to there, and across one, and down three, and that gets us to there. There we go, so again with a pencil and a ruler, you can join those all up, point the arrow in the opposite direction, and we'll label that minus 2b. And there we go, there's part A. Now for part B and C, we need to know these vectors as column vectors. So we've already got B, so let's write this down. We've got the vector B, which is 1 across and 3 down. Okay, let's just write that in again, there we go. And we've got the vector A, which we've already established before, which was 1 across and 2 up. There we go, so that's 1 over 2. And there we go. In regards to the rest of the question, very similar to what we looked at in the start of the video. So for two a's, let's write this down over here now, we've got two a minus b. So two lots of a, let's double the a, and that'll be two over four. And we're gonna take away the b, which is one over minus three. There we go, just squeezing that in there. So we've got two take away one, which gives us one, and four take away negative three, which adds the three, so it's one over seven. And there we go, there's our first one, one over seven. On to this final question, we've got three a's to do to start with, so let's triple that a vector, and that's going to be three over six, triple the one, triple the two, and we're going to add to that two of the b's, which is two over, and it's going to be minus six on the bottom. There we go. Right, so finishing this off, add together the tops, we've got three and two, which makes five, and we've got six add negative six. There we go, so six add negative six, they're going to cancel each other out, so that's going to be zero on the bottom. So our final vector there is 5 over 0. There we go. And that's our final question. And that's how we're going to approach the vectors when we're adding and subtracting column vectors. And also when we've been given graphical representations of them. And we need to sort of draw them on or, or turn them into a column vector and then approach the sums that way. So there we go, hopefully you found that useful and helpful. Um, do make sure that you check out the rest of the Grade 5 crossover playlist. And that, the link for those will be in the description. But there we go, see you for the next one.